Right, well with us we have um, Steve and Paul from the Sex Pistols, who whether they like it or not, have got the hottest record, hottest album in Britain at the moment. Welcome to the show, Stephen. Hello. Um, first of all, can we go back going over, say, a year ago, because uh, down in uh, the land un down under, we don't know, we didn't know that much about you until anarchy in the UK, which caused a storm both uh, both in the UK and then eventually down in Australia with EMI. Um, can you tell us a little bit about the group before you actually uh, broke or signed up with EMI? Uh, when it, you've been no, I forgot. It's only a year ago. <laughs> Do you know? Paul? Well, before we signed with BMI. Yeah, I mean, what were you doing? Yeah, we was um, we was just playing around clubs in London, um, built up a big following, and that led up to the signing with EMI. They signed us about this time last year, I think. And at that stage, um, I mean, was there any aggro as far as the company was concerned? I mean, who with? With, with between the group and the company. I mean. Yeah, all the time. Yeah, as soon as we started, they tried to set, tell us what single to bring out straight away, which was the wrong thing to do. They tried to tell us to bring out, I think it was vacant straight away, but we wanted Anarchy in the UK, and we got it, and they didn't like that, so it was crap right from the start. Now, the, um, the, row, with, uh, <laughs> the row with EMI was over, um, over really what? I mean, what was the true story behind the break with EMI? Stephen? I don't know, still don't know. It's there was a lot of things, a lot of rumours saying that uh, oh, fuck, they were just scared of us, really. Like they, they wanted us at first as a novelty, mm. and like once they got us, they were scared of us. Scared in what respect, though? Well, after that Grundy thing, they shit themselves and they didn't know what to do with us. Yeah. Then we went to, uh, where was it? A&M. No, Amsterdam. Oh, that's right. And like... What's that? It's a couple of birds. Well, <laughs> I want them. <laughs> <laughs> and when we, um... When we went to Amsterdam, like, the press at the airport said we shit and puked up everywhere. And, like, we didn't. And we got and we got to Amsterdam, we got a letter saying that they wanted to redraw their contract. So they did. And uh, we didn't have a rental company then. They give us £40,000. Well, at that stage, Anarchy in the UK had already been released, both UK, Europe and, uh, and yeah, Australia. Yeah, but they stopped, they stopped bringing they, it out. Yeah, they stopped bringing it out. They wouldn't stock it, like, they made out, like, no one could get in the records, but they just didn't fucking bother getting it out, putting it out anyway. Right. Um, and then after that, there was a lull, and then you <coughs> were signed up. A bit of a lull. A bit of a lull. A bit of a lull. And you were signed up then with A&M. Yeah, yeah for, another, a week. for a week. For a week, yeah. For a week. Um, and then, again, um, there was all the money thing, and they um, opted no, out no. of their contract. Uh, and then I read how... Um, you as a group were finding it rather frustrating in the sense that all you wanted to do was go out and play and put down a record. Wasn't well, that yeah. frustrating at that stage? Well, yeah. I wanted to get a riddle out, but like... Yeah? It didn't fucking matter, cos like... They had all that dough, like... They spent it. And, uh, and what, what actually happened to the money? I mean, did, did you put it away, or did you didn't really spend, spend it all? You couldn't oh, we put it in... The pub. Put it into funds. <laughs> yeah. We give it to charity. We give it to Oxfam. <laughs> Right, so then after that... So um, punks could get their clothes for nothing, see. Virgin Records uh, signed you up, but by this stage you were sort of becoming uh, cult heroes. I mean, is that what you wanted to happen? No, we wanted... As far to, as the press would No, concerned? we wanted to play. We hadn't been allowed to play. It's right from that Bill Grundy thing. Everyone got really paranoid right away, all the way since then. We just ain't been allowed to play, and it all started from that, really. Now, with, with the companies, um, the record companies, since I've been over here and just chatting around, there's been a lot of uh, uh, debate about whether, in fact, Bill Grundy was the one that was at fault by edging you all on. Well, no, uh, it's just like if you walk down the fucking road, like me, someone's an argument, you give him an arg argument back, didn't you? Yeah. And like he started it, he said, go on, you get another five seconds. So, what like, did you say, Steve? I just fucking give him a load of abuse, like. Yeah. And he asked for it, didn't he? Were you surprised then the next day when all the publicity hit the, the daily papers and spread right across the world? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty funny. It's, it's like, you know, they put all that on the front fucking page for all that, just for swearing on the television. We forgot stupid, about it. Yeah. We forgot about the whole thing a couple of hours after, mm. and we didn't expect nothing to happen from it. Okay, now with, um, <coughs> a year later, after after sort of being um, with the release of the Anarchy in the UK, you've now been sort of um, hailed as the uh, the leaders of uh, 
the new wave music or punk rock um, bands. Uh, That's right. <laughs> But, I mean, but there's a million and one around. I mean, what are your opinion now of, of the bands that are around? Well, yeah, well, I mean, like they're trying. I mean, it's better to go and see them Led Zeppelin, isn't it? Or someone like that. It's better they want to get involved with something different than what they've had over the past eight or ten years before we started. Yeah. You know what I mean? Has it affected you uh, musically, like with it being recording, songwriting or anything like that with all the controversy that has raged over the last, say, 12 months? Yeah, we just like to write songs what upset people even more now. Do you purposely, are you purposely going out to upset people? No, but people upset us, so like, we just do everything we can to get on their nerves. Are you, um, are you all, or are you two anti-establishment? Uh, it's up to other people to decide, isn't it? We everyone, don't, we everyone, don't go out to say, oh, we're anti-establishment, we're this, we're that. We, we just, just do what we, you want to do. We're just ourselves. Yeah. If people don't like it, it's tough. Like, for instance, when you brought out God Save the Queen, a lot of people um, in the daily press, and then in some cases in the musical press, said you were anti-royalists. Are you anti-royalists? Well, no. I've never met the Queen in my life. So why should I want to know her? Is it big? I mean, do you think, well, let's, let's don't get on. Don't bother about it. We don't bother about it. We just don't care about the Queen. She you. don't give a fuck about us, does she? Yeah, but not bothering about her, then why write a song about her? Why well, not? We, we write a song about how much we don't like her. Yeah. Um, on Nothing that... Nothing wrong with that. It's only a statement, isn't it? Saying yeah. saying what you feel, just because you put on a record. Now, with, um, with Pretty Vacant, um, which was probably now <clears throat> one of the easiest going singles to go onto the charts because there was sort of, there wasn't the flack that was coming out of the other two. Uh, is that the way you prefer it to be, like just to get on with the music and not worry about so much the, the bullshit that, that, yeah, that surrounds Yeah, but we, we get bullshit all the time from people. We're just trying to do what we want to do all the time. We just get bullshit all the time, non-stop. <laughs> but from but from whom? From from your recording from everyone, company? Everyone, yeah. Not just them. Everyone, all the press, everyone, all the media, you know. Yeah. Just I mean, won't leave us alone. <coughs> yeah, well, exactly. I mean, like, you can pick up. I mean, for literally eight months running, you could find that. You some... can pick up the sun today and find us <coughs> in there. Yeah, but I mean, like, like for, for eight months running, like, you found sounds and uh, and any me, and now even Melody Maker and Record Mirror. Yeah. Uh, sort of giving you short space, say, this time a year ago, but sort of claiming you as a, you know, a potentially good group, to now, where <coughs> we're on the front cover every week. Did you get bored with that? I mean, well, what was your uh, attitude towards that every week? Music papers, yeah, yeah they, they got nothing better to write about, I suppose, you know. They're just as fed up as writing about all the, other, all the old shit groups as well. It just sells their papers yeah. putting us in it now, you know what I mean? Yeah, like and putting us on the front, it just sells their papers. It's a, bit, it's a bit stupid, really. Now, on the um, <clears throat> on the live side of things, is, is it proving frustrating for you that, that you're unable to play at a lot of gigs? Yeah, of course For it is. many reasons. What, that we can't play live? Mm. Yeah, of course it is. We want to play live. That's the idea of being in a group, but we ain't been allowed to. We seem to, we seem to have got more fucking successful not playing anywhere than when we have playing, but, like, we want to play, you know. Yeah. What about... Um, a possible tour, you know, going to either America or to Asia or down to Australia. Well, we're going to Australia sometime next year, but I don't know where. Yeah, we're when. starting a, <coughs> a tour that will take us all round all over the world, I think, next year. We should be constantly... Tell them about your mate. Constantly touring. There. Oh, yeah, my mate in Australia. You've got a mate, mate in, in Australia. Australia. What's his name? Danny. And where do you if think he, he is? If he's still there, he's on the run. He's on the run, yeah. is he? I see. Um, I've got a mate out well, let's there. Let's hope he's stopped enough to see the telly. <laughs> I've, got, I've got a mate out there as well. Hi, Daddy. Now listen, um, his I'm, name's Bruce. His name's Bruce? Yeah. <laughs> There's a lot of Bruce's out there. It'd be actually. easy to find, wouldn't it? Um, now listen, now back to, back to music. <laughs> on, the, uh, on the album side, you've just released your first album and it's gone to number one within a day in England on the British charts, on the album's charts. Does it worry you that you're perhaps too big now? No, we don't, like, we don't think of it as being famous. I mean, like, I still, you know, we just, I just still feel the same. I don't feel famous at all. Like, we just, we don't drive about in limousines or anything. We're just doing the same things now as we've done a year ago. 
Yeah, but I mean, you might, but the thing is that there's a million people out there that don't think that anymore. Yeah, they know, think that the Sex Pistols, and, and rightly so, are the number one group in the country now. I mean, does, what, what, does it frighten you at all? Not for me, no. No? No. What about yourself? Does it bother you? Uh, I, don't, I don't give a fuck. What? I don't care. Has it proved, has it proved to be a hassle, though, that, that, that suddenly <laughs> you've shot... my mate back or whatever you can. <laughs> has it proved to be a hassle that you've suddenly, you know, shot into this sort of status of becoming... Well, it's, you know, it's just like... One of them things, isn't it? You know, like, if we, we started out just being different, so, like, we're, we're getting our... You know, we, we sort of, like, paid our dudes all our fucking life. And like, I'm gonna just get and say it back for it, because like we started out, like, we didn't want to be nice and everything to please it. We just want to do what we want to do. Like yeah. now, everyone hated us, and now all of a sudden we sort of like become famous through that. Now on the songwriting side of 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 the, of the group, um, I mean, do you, are you all writing songs now or what? Yeah, we all write the songs. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and like now, take Anarchy in the UK, uh, and you were saying just a moment ago that you thought it was perhaps it came out too early. Yeah. Came out this time last year and weren't really big then at all the punk rock yeah. movement, you know. Do you think it was slightly overshadowed by the by the controversy that was going around it? I mean, just on yeah. punk rock. No one took no notes of the music at all. All they was worried about was the front page headlines and everything. No one even bothered to listen to the records, and they didn't realise how good it was. Now, God Save the Queen sort of <clears throat> was obviously something that was going to cause a lot of controversy, as far as w whether yeah. you liked it or not. Uh, pretty vacant. People have taken it. Uh, pretty serious and uh, and to your favour. I mean, you must be pretty happy about the way Pretty Vacant was treated. I don't know. I didn't mm. really like Pretty Vacant. But like, in what respect? You didn't like it musically, or yeah. the way it was recorded, or what? Yeah. Well, no, I just didn't like. It. I never liked liked the song that much. I mean, like, everyone else likes it so much. Um, is it hard for <coughs> for the group to go in and uh, and? reproduce the sound you're getting on stage? I mean, you've got so much energy. I mean, like, is it hard no, in the studio? No, it's better live than it is on record. That's what I'm saying. So it's hard to re recreate it in the studios, in the recorded studio. Not really. No, because, like, we argue so much that the frustration comes out when we actually play it and oh. things like that. We, we all know what we want when we go in the studio and what sounds we want. So it comes pretty natural to us, you know. Now, on, um, uh, if I can be a bit personal with both of you. Um, what colour pants have you got on? No, no. Don't look at um, <laughs> well, I mean, what did your parents? What did your parents think of it when you first formed the group? And what did they think when, this time last year when all the, the rage was going on about... Parents? Mm. I ain't seen my mum dead about fucking four years. Haven't you? What about yourself? Uh, they don't care. My mum really likes, really likes our records. She yeah. likes no fun the best. Yeah. Well, what about, um, <laughs> what about when, it, when God Save the Queen came out and then again all the controversy raged and then the Bill Grundy television thing? Was she worried then? Nah, she used to go around arguing with people in our favour. Yeah? If everyone had a go at her, you know, she used to argue back on our side. She's, you know, they don't care. Now, coming to the album, uh, there was a lot of talk that, uh, that the group didn't want any of the singles on the album. Um, and I suppose one has to believe what they read. Yeah, it's all Bruce's fault. You asked him. He wanted them on the album. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he made us. And there was also a story how, um, at one stage, uh, one of your producers was saying that uh, there were some mislaid master tapes that got washed out in the rain or something like that. What was that? I heard that one. I heard that rumour. Oh, that's a new story. That's a that's new one. Around. Yeah, that's a new one going around about the pistols. Um, are, you are you completely happy with the album? What now? Yeah. As yeah, far I'm as just glad it's out and everything. It's been such a long time, you know. Yeah. But it's good. It's a good album. It's really good. Yeah. Uh, now the current single, "Holidays in the Sun." Um, oh fuck! It's, it's about an holiday in Berlin. We about a what? It's about a holiday in Berlin. We went for yeah. an holiday for a week. Malcolm wanted to get us out of the way for a week, so we just wrote a song about it. And uh, when do you actually write your song? Sort of. When you're rehearsing or just... Yeah, we yeah. go down the studio and just work it all out. Like, if there's a few ideas, like, everyone else puts some ideas into it. Yeah. And, like, I mean, like, there's a lot of arguing, like, oh, I don't like this bit, I don't like that bit, but, like, in the end, like, you get a song out of it. So it's yeah. worth it. Ooh. So what, 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 what can we look forward to from the Pistols over the next six months, then? Now that you've got this album Nothing. out of the way. <laughs> uh... <laughs> uh 
touring, playing as much as we can. Yeah. We're doing a big like tour. Is it worldwide or what? Yeah, as many countries yeah, as we can go to tour. next year. Yeah. It'll probably be Australia. Well, we'll definitely be Australia in that and all. And obviously you're looking forward to that now. Yeah. 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 Bit of sunshine. Okay, well listen, thanks very much for coming you, on the you show. You can invite all the kangaroos to our gigs. To do the pogo? Yeah. 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 <laughs> um, Put thanks. a safety pin in there, well. Thanks for <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> you could imagine kangaroos with safety pins. They do pogo, don't they? Yeah. <laughs> thanks for coming on the show. Um, you, you've been made out, and especially down in Australia, it's been the, um, the most impossible group to get along with. All well, I can say is it's been a pleasure talking to you. We're reasonable. Yeah, not bad at all. I wish I could say the same. Mate. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs>